What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now, today we are not going to be doing any ranking. In fact, we are just going to be building around a theme, which is something we don't get to do a whole lot of on this channel, but you know what? I wanted to do a bonus build for you all, and I put out a poll, and you guys wanted to see a a coffee lock today how to do one of those in modern times and so I think that that is a fantastic idea and so we're gonna give that a try before we jump into it make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already as you can see most people who watch this channel are not subscribed so please don't be one of those people and help us to get to 2,000 by the end of this year I really think we can do it but I need your help to get there and of course make sure to share the video with your friends and click the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded I want to go ahead and say before we jump in, my preamble this week is going to be a little longer than normal, so I'm going to have timestamps at the bottom for this if you want to skip through this part, but I want to go in depth as to what the coffee lock is and why it is so broken, or at least why it was so broken, and what problems we face when it comes to making this build. And so I think this is really interesting, but if you want to skip it, then go straight to the build, totally fine, I understand. So the coffee lock, what is it? Let, let's talk about that first. The coffee lock is a very infamous build when it comes to D&D 5e, which takes advantage of the font of magic feature on the sorcerer class and the pact magic feature from the warlock class. So as you know, warlocks are an amazing class that get spell slots on a short rest. They just only get very few of them. And sorcerers get things called sorcery points, which they can use to spend on meta magic options, among other things. And these two things find a bit of harmony in that font of magic feature, which says that you can turn your spell slots into sorcery points and vice versa. Now, the thing is, there's no limit as to how many spell slots you can have under this rule. You're really only limited to how many sorcery points you have, but they all go away whenever you complete a long rest. So, in theory, you're going to have to take a long rest every so often, usually every 24 hours, and so then those go away and you don't have a problem. However, if you can find a way to stay awake and never sleep ever again, and only take short rests, then technically you could have an unlimited number of spell slots. And that is where the coffee part of the coffee lock comes into play. Our goal is to not long rest ever again and only short rest and always be converting spell slots from the warlock into our sorcery points and then those into sorcerer spell slots that we can keep for as long as we want and we can have as many of them as we want. We're really only limited by how many sorcery points we can have at a time. There is a limit on that and that is your sorcerer level. So there is a bit of a stipulation with that one. Um, but I mean, overall it sounds pretty easy, right? Well, it was, until Xanathar's Guide to Everything came out and kind of ruined the coffee lock, and it's why you don't really see very many people talking about this combination anymore. The reason that it's messed up is because they added a rule that if you go more than 24 hours without resting, then you start to suffer exhaustion. You do have to make a constitution saving throw and it gets harder every day, and eventually, you know, six levels of exhaustion will kill you. So it makes it really difficult. That wasn't there before. You could theoretically stay up as long as you wanted to and you could just last forever and there was no, no problem with this. Now there's a bit of a problem where we're going to have exhaustion all the time. And so you could say, well, you know, my, my paladin or uh, my cleric or somebody like that is going to cast greater restoration on me and do it. You cannot rely on your party to cast greater restoration, a fifth level spell on you every day because you wanted to stay up all night playing video games. I don't think that that's reasonable. So we're going to have to find a way to be self-sufficient when it comes to all of this. And it means that the combination is far from what it used to be. Uh, the coffee lock has definitely fallen off in how high it used to sit in brokenness. 
it's still good, but it takes a long time to get going. And so I just want to tell you, this is really something that only works in the late game. Uh, it really doesn't come online until stage three play. And, and that's a little disappointing, but I'm going to show you how you can do a modern coffee lock under today's rules. And I think it's fun, but like I said, you've got to wait till really high level for this to work. And then I've got a surprise for it at the end in a way to just go from zero to a hundred really, really quickly with this in mind. So with that long preamble out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into today's build. Starting off, of course, with our race, we are actually going to go with an Eberron race. And again, I know that Eberron races are not allowed at every table. I get it, but... I think a lot of tables do allow it, and for those that don't, you could always go with something a little bit different. The problem with this, picking a race is a lot harder in this case, because a lot of races give you something that is proficiency bonus times per long rest, or one time per long rest. A ton of races give you that, right? We are, are trying to get to a place where we don't long rest. And so that's kind of difficult in picking a race outside of your variant human and your custom lineage. And I didn't want to do that for this kind of a build. I felt like it's boring and I felt like I could, I could do a little bit more. So instead, we're going to go with the Mark of Shadow Elf. This is fun. I don't normally do elves on the channel. I've done a few half elves, but I don't normally go full elves. Um, I don't know why. Elves are very strong. Uh, I, I just never seem to use them. So here you go. This is this is your elf for, for the day, for the week. So why the Mark of Shadow elf? Um, a few things. Number one, we get a D4 added to stealth checks and performance checks which is really nice, right? Those are two that are pretty cool. Uh, we're good at performance checks, even though we're not gonna be focusing on them. And stealth checks are always a good thing to have a bonus to, especially if we're gonna be wearing some armor on this build, which spoiler alert, we will be just to, you know, not die immediately. Uh, so that's cool. I, I think having that bonus there is really nice. Um, we also pick up the minor illusion cantrip for free and we can cast invisibility once per long rest. Now, it's going to be a while before, you know, we stop sleeping altogether, so this will be nice for the beginning portion of this build, but eventually this feature is going to just go by the wayside and we're never going to use it again. So, that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, and finally, we get an expanded spell list to add on to our list. Now, keep in mind here, these are only options that can go on your spell list. We are making a Sorlock here. So Sorcerers and Warlocks are learned classes, meaning they don't just get to prepare things every day. What you choose is what you get, and that's what you keep. You can swap them out later, but you don't get to swap them out daily like your prepared casters do. And so that leaves you a lot less flexibility. Um, and you definitely want to make sure that you get it right the first time because you don't get a lot of chances to swap those out. Um, but we can add a bunch of things to our spell list. Now, the Sorcerer spell list is already quite large. And we're adding a few things here that are new. Not a whole lot, to be honest. Um, the big one is Pass Without Trace is really great. I, I love Pass Without Trace quite a bit. Um, Darkness is on here, but we got that already. And we're going to be taking that here again. Um, um, greater invisibility is also really good um, there, there are a lot of really good spells here but the big thing is I want to be able to qualify for a feat that we are going to get a little bit later and it's going to bring this whole kit together especially at late levels so then for our stats of course we're using our modified standard array as we always do on this channel if you're using point by or standard array or rolled stats or anything like that you will have to adjust these but just keep in mind that the top three those on the left hand column those are going to be the ones that you want to focus on in your point by and then you can just go and dump the rest of them usually um, in this case we do need four stats to be decent so you're gonna have to be a little bit more strategic with your point by so that's just a little bit of a, of a heads up going into this um, but uh, we'll talk through it as we go for these stats I'm going to take a 17 in our charisma 15 in constitution a 13 strength a 12 dexterity and then dump the other two so we can't do anything with wisdom, unfortunately, and intelligence, you never do anything with intelligence unless you're an artificer or a wizard. So 
it is what it is. But with these stats, we can do our plus two into our charisma and our plus one into our constitution, giving us a 19 and a 16 respectively. As far as equipment goes, I would take some medium armor, of course, just get the best you can you can get. Um, get a shield and then a warhammer is probably my recommendation here or any weapon that has the versatile property, really. Um, we're not taking crusher or slasher or any of those on this build, so feel free to take your favorite weapon there and just be able to have it in two hands. You know, you may have to put the shield away for some reason. Um, you may need that to be your free hand for casting spells. You may put your sword away and cast spells with the other hand. It just, it just depends. So, you know, you've got to be able to be versatile when it comes to that. So that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking here. So without any further ado, Let's start taking some levels. So at level one, of course we're building a Sorlock here. So which one do we start with? Do we start with Sorcerer or do we start with Warlock? I'm gonna start with Sorcerer. And the main reason is Constitution saving throw proficiency. Like I said, our Constitution is not great. Uh, it's a 16 and that is the best that it's gonna get. Uh, we are not gonna have time to boost it at all for the rest of the build, uh, just because we're gonna be doing multi-classing here and there, we're gonna be taking some feats in order to boost our power. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot of things that we have to do and we only have X number of levels to do it. So we're starting with Sorcerer. At this first level, I'm just gonna say stay alive because we can't use any of that equipment that we bought. We're just kind of carrying it around. So you probably found it somewhere or uh, it was passed down to you, but you don't know really what to do with it yet. But we will. We'll figure it out here in just a second. Um, but as a first level sorcerer, we are very squishy. Uh, but we get spell casting and we also get to pick our subclass. And that is one thing that's fantastic about both the sorcerer and the warlock. We get a subclass at level one. So which subclass are we going to go with? There are a few options that are really, really strong. Sorcerer's really strong. They just don't get a ton of spells. Um, but they get some really amazing things that they can do with said spells in the form of meta magic, uh, and that's what makes them really, really powerful. As far as the subclass, though, we're gonna go with the Divine Soul Sorcerer. The Divine Soul Sorcerer is one of the better ones, and it allows us access to the cleric spell list and that is something that's fantastic the cleric spell list is one of the best spell lists in the game it's very versatile both for healing and for damage uh you know you've got things like spiritual weapon you've got things like flame strike you've got all of these amazing things that no other class gets access to and they deal damage right that's pretty awesome. And so we now have full access to that as a sorcerer and they all count as sorcerer spells for us too. So that means they all use our charisma mod instead of a wisdom modifier, which is amazing. So that's great. So we get divine magic there and we also get favored by the gods. So that also helps us to just be better at not failing all the time. So that's, that's really helpful as well. That'll definitely come up quite a bit so definitely use that as far as our spell selection goes of course we get minor illusion for free and i'm just going to name a bunch of cantrips here and you just take your pick because there are so many good ones right and there's there is overlap on the warlock list um but just just pick your favorites uh the only one that i would say you have to take really is booming blade uh take it either now or on your warlock list um, your warlock list is already kind of taken up with uh, one of them is already taken with Eldritch Blast, um, but you could take Booming Blade as your other one. There aren't a ton of great ones outside of Eldritch Blast, um, but I'm just going to name a few that are my favorites. Uh, Firebolt, Lightning Lure, Mage Hand, Prestidigitation, Mind Sliver, Toll the Dead, Spare the Dying, and Sacred Flame. All of those are really great. Of course, we get access to the Cleric cantrips as well, so you can jump over and grab some of those too. Just pick your favorites. All of those are really, really good. As far as first level spells, again, I'm just going to name a few here because we don't get that many. Uh, we're very limited in our spell selection, so Shield is kind of a must bring just to keep you alive for the first few levels. Um, and then then of course we also have guiding bolt and cure wounds uh, if you don't have a cleric on your team then you probably are going to be functioning as the quasi cleric even though you're much more squishy and easy to kill so you're kind of pulling double duty at this point uh, you'll you'll get better as you go don't worry at level two we're going to go ahead and take our first level of warlock and 
I think it's funny, you know, we've got this divine energy flowing through our blood and all of a sudden our hammer starts talking to us and we're like, hey, uh, we should probably do something about that. And we make a deal with our hammer. So we're going to take some Hexblade levels now. Hexblade is a fantastic subclass for many, many reasons, and you'll see why later on down the road. Um, I, I'm kind of doing this to plan for the late game. You could go with a different subclass if you're not going that deep into a game. I just want to build a Sorlock. Um, there, there are a lot of other options, and I will talk about those at the very end in our honorable mentions. But for one that is planning on making it to tier three and tier four of play and actually doing Sorlock things, then I'm going to recommend the Hexblade because we just get a lot out of it, right? Number one, we get our Hex Warrior. And so we now have access to our medium armor, our shield and our martial weapon. So that's all stuff we can take off our back. And we now figured out how to use it because our hammer told us how, and that, that was great. Um, we also get our Hexblade's Curse, which is pretty awesome. So it helps us to crit. It helps us to teleport a little bit. Uh, it, it's it's really, really nice in, in uh, what it can give you as far as versatility, as far as mobility goes. Uh, there's just a lot, a lot to love about this. And of course, we can also use our Charisma modifier in order to hit and to damage with our weapon now. So we don't have to worry about our strength being X amount. We don't have to worry about our dex being X amount. It's all based on Charisma now, so we can focus on Charisma being as high as possible, which it's already a 19. So we're doing pretty well here at level two. Love that. As far as our spells go with our Pact Magic feature, again, remember, Pact Magic is different from spell casting. These spell slots go away very quickly, but they also come back on a short rest. So you have to keep these separated. They are not the same, but you can cast one spell using either spell slot list. So you can use a Warlock spell slot to cast a Sorcerer spell or a Sorcerer spell slot to cast a Hexblade spell, which you probably will be doing uh, a lot more so than, than the other way around, just because you have more of them as a Sorcerer. As far as our spell selection goes, for Cantrips, Eldritch Blast, you can't go without it. And especially on this build, we want Eldritch Blast. Eldritch Blast is just super reliable as far as dealing damage. Uh, it's an amazing cantrip. It deals more beams as you level up overall. It's force damage. It's a D10. It's got a huge range. What's not to love? I, I think it's an absolutely fantastic bring here. And then Booming Blade, if you haven't taken it already. And of course, there are a couple other options that you could consider, but that's going to be my favorite one to take right here. At our first level spells, though, I would take Armor of Agathus every single time. We're going to be able to upcast this very reliably going forward once we get to where we're trying to go. And being able to cast this at fourth, fifth level all the time to be able to deal back some damage and have some temporary HP up most of the time is going to be really fantastic. Again, we have a D6 hit die from Sorcerer. We need help. And so this is going to give us some really reliable temporary HP and deal some damage back to people who get way too close. So I think that's absolutely fantastic. Hex is also another really good bring here. I probably would drop Hex later on, to be honest, though. I don't think it's one that you want to hang on to too terribly long um, but it's nice here at the very beginning and then later on you can you can dump it that's that's totally fun at level three we're going to jump back to sorcerer and go ahead and pick up font of magic so font of magic is what gives us our sorcery points and those are what allow us to convert spell slots into our sorcery points and vice versa now, I do want to mention one little thing in that there is a tweet from Jeremy Crawford that says that you technically could interpret the ruling on Font of Magic to not include spell slots coming from the Pact Magic feature. Make sure to talk to your DM to make sure that he or she does not read it this way before you try to do this build because otherwise your life is over and this this is no good uh there, there are just a lot of things standing in the way of the coffee log nowadays and i just i'm trying to give every warning beforehand so that you don't get halfway through the game and end up disappointed because of some kind of ruling that that doesn't go in your favor at level four we get eldritch invocations yep we're jumping back to warlock um so eldritch invocations are such an integral part of being a warlock they are what make them so powerful with so few spell slots you have to make up for it right and so this is how you do it um 
The first one that I would have to take is Devil's Sight. Devil's Sight basically gives you the ability to see in darkness both regular and magical. That is amazing. And we're going to need that. The big thing is seeing in magical darkness, because as you noticed, I mentioned that we are getting the darkness spell and we're going to be using it quite a bit actually on this build. And the other one that you take actually doesn't matter because we're going to drop it immediately next turn. So if you want to take agonizing blast, great, take it for right now. We're going to get rid of it as soon as we hit the next level. So it is what it is. Unfortunately, uh, we don't get an extra one there that is not required for the build. At Warlock 3, level 5 overall, we are going to get our Pact Boon. And as much as I want to take Pact of the Blade, I can't. Uh, we have to take Pact of the Tome. Now, Pact of the Tome gives us even more cantrips. And so you've got cantrips just coming out of your ears at this point. Uh, you could take things like Vicious Mockery if you wanted to, because it's from any spell list. Um, I'm not even going to bother recommending them because you have a ton of them. You you are never going to run out of cantrips. And if, if nothing else, you're going to be staring at your character sheet for forever, trying to figure out which cantrip to cast because there are too many. So yeah, you're going to be good on cantrips here but what we do here though is we also because we gained a level in warlock we can swap out an invocation and we are going to swap it out for aspect of the moon aspect of the moon makes it to where we no longer require sleep this is very important because you know normally people require sleep right this does not negate the rule though, at least in my opinion, this does not negate the rule that you have to make a constitution saving throw every 24 hours. I know some DMs who do think that though. And so if your DM says that this is not necessary, then take Agonizing Blast or some other amazing Eldritch Invocation and skip this one entirely. In my opinion, you need it, but I know certain DMs read this differently. And so I'm going to say take it uh, if you have room to not take it, take something different. I, I think Agonizing Blast is your best option there as far as that goes. And then, heck, you could also go Pack to the Blade at that point, too, and and go from there, which, which is also really, really cool. But I'm going to assume that we're taking Pack to the Tome and we are going with Aspect of the Moon in order to no longer require sleep. So we're five levels in and we've kind of built the core of what it is that we're trying to do. So I wanna pause here for just a second. Um, this build gets complicated very quickly, just in these first five levels as far as what we're trying to do. So what more are we needing to get out of this build? So th this kind of determines the direction that we go next. Do we take more Warlock levels? Do we take more Sorcerer levels? Do we look elsewhere? Um, I, I don't think we look elsewhere. Uh, I think it's I think it's all still within within this kit here. But our problem is we cannot change our maximum number of sorcery points. We can only still have two right now, and that will only give us one first level spell slot. That's not all that great, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, we, we definitely want higher level spell slots to be able to regenerate all the time, and so we're going to have to take a lot more sorcerer levels in order to make this work. In addition to that, if your DM is going to make it to where you suffer exhaustion by not sleeping, then we definitely need some kind of higher level magic in order to get around that exhaustion. Getting around exhaustion is tough. It's really tough and, and it just requires so much of an investment that, like I said, so many levels have to go into this in order to make this work. So. Let's go ahead and start doing that right now. As Sorcerer 3, we get our meta magic options here, and we get two. I'm going to recommend taking Quickened and Twinned Spell. I think those are both amazing options. Quickened Spell, of course, allowing us to cast a spell with a one action casting time as a bonus action and you know we're also picking up second level spells here such as darkness this can allow you to cast the darkness spell as a bonus action and then fire off an eldritch blast at advantage which is kind of the whole point of the darkness spell if the enemy cannot see you you have advantage so that's giving you a better chance for a crit and if you have your Hexblade's Curse on them, then you also get double chance to crit on a 19, which is really, really cool as well. Uh, 
And of course, Twin Spell doesn't work on Eldritch Blast, but it does work on other spells that can target only one creature. You can then target two. Situational, but very handy when it does work out, especially for things we get a little bit later, such as Haste. But as far as this level goes, we do get second level spells. Hold Person is a great one. Uh, Spiritual Weapon is an amazing one as well. Spiritual Weapon is a cleric spell, but it does a lot of great damage on your bonus action. I'm all about this. I, I think that's really, really great to take here. And Pass Without Trace as well from our racial. Pass Without Trace is one of the best spells for sneaking around, and we are going to need it. We may or may not have disadvantage given our armor, or we may have someone else in the party who has disadvantage, and giving a flat 10 to stealth is going to really get you all out of some really, really sticky situations at times and save you from some really bad rolls. At Sorcerer 4, we get our first ASI or feat, and it has been a long time. Gosh, it's level 7, and we're just now getting an ASI or a feat. But we need it, and we're ignoring that ASI. You already know that we are just blowing right past it. Uh, we are going with Elven Accuracy. Now, Elven Accuracy is technically a half feat, which is great, and we get to add a bonus to one of a number of our traits here, and one of them, of course, being Charisma. We're going to take a plus one to Charisma and go ahead and max that out, which is great. And whenever we have advantage and are rolling a d20, well, two d20s rolling with advantage for something having to do with charisma, then we get to roll a third die and take whichever one we like. That's fantastic. It's making it easier for us to crit once again, and we are going to have advantage pretty much all the time because of the darkness spell. That's pretty gross, and I think it's fantastic. It's very cheeky but I love it and it's going to help us to be that much more effective at doing what it is that we want to do. And plus it got us to our 20 charisma, which is also great. It only took seven levels. At Sorcerer 5, we're gonna get Magical Guidance, which is all right, I guess. Uh, you can use a sorcery point and it helps you out with, with rolls. I, I don't think it's all that great. I'm not gonna use it very much personally, uh, but it's there if you need it. Um, and then we get third level spells here as well. Oh, there's so many good spells and we get so few of them, which is what makes me sad So I'm gonna give a big list and I know that you can't take most of them. So it's just it's just really sad uh, Counter spell haste hypnotic pattern mass healing word revivify actually catnap is one to consider However, you can only benefit from catnap once per long rest, which is so unfortunate I really wish that they didn't have that restriction on there because otherwise it would be great But you can do it once and then once we start actually sleeping then we can't use that spell anymore And so it's not worth it. So it, it makes me upset But it would have helped us get in our short rests that much easier Unfortunately a sorcerer six we get empowered healing and this allows us to reroll any number of dice whenever we go to heal heal somebody for the cost of one sorcery point. Very good trade most of the time, so you probably will use that one, uh, especially when you're, you know, upcasting cure wounds or anything like that. You can just re-roll those dice for free, pretty much. I'm all about that. That's that's fantastic. At Sorcerer 7, we get no features, but we do get fourth level Sorcerer spells. Things like Banishment, Polymorph, and Wall of Fire are all great contenders. Now, you might be wondering, okay, do you stop now? Because seven is kind of where we hit the conversion rate for fifth level spell slots. And my answer is, I can't stop yet with the sorcerer levels. And the reason is I don't have fifth level spells yet. I have to have fifth level spells in order for this to work, at least at pretty much every table. And that's what's so tough about this, right? It, it makes you very limited in what you can do because you have to take so many levels to get around all of the new restrictions. But it's what we're gonna have to do. So at Sorcerer 8, we get an ASI or a feat, and I'm, I'm up in the air on this one, to be honest. It, it's a tough one, right? We're maxed out on Charisma. We don't need that. We have a 16 in Constitution, which could be better. Uh, I, I definitely want to make this better because we're casting Darkness a lot. Uh, and I want to maintain concentration on it. We have a 13 in our strength, which I don't need anymore. We just need a 13. But we have a 12 in our dexterity. So if we could put a plus 2 there, then it would help our armor class and initiative. 
it's hard, right? Uh, I'm personally gonna put the plus two into constitution, but if you put it into dexterity, I understand. Um, but that's just me. I, I think it's better off in constitution and helping us to maintain our darkness spell because it's just the whole crux of what we're doing. In fairness, we technically could be better off going with dexterity. And the reason is because once we have essentially unlimited spell slots, then it really doesn't matter if we have to re-up it as long as we have a sorcery point to quicken it, right? We can always quicken darkness and get it back up. We're not worried about running out of spell slots for it. And so the concentration isn't as important. But I would also rather be using my bonus action for spiritual weapon instead of having to recast darkness every turn because we dropped it. So I'm going to go with constitution, but I could definitely see the case being made for the alternative. All right. Sorcerer 9. We get 5th level spells here. And here's the thing. We get so many amazing 5th level spells as a sorcerer. Animate objects. Bigby's hand. Cloud kill. Dominate person. Hold monster. And, and a bunch of others. But the one that we have to take is Greater Restoration. Greater Restoration is not one that you would typically think of taking as a sorcerer. It is not one that you, you know, as a sorcerer, like, man, you know what spell I need above all my other ones? Forget Fireball, forget Gigby's Hand, forget Cloud Kill, forget all of this other stuff. I want Greater Restoration. It's boring, I know, but we have to have it in order to get around any type of rulings here. Because again, if we don't sleep, then we could end up having to make a constitution saving throw and eventually suffering points of exhaustion. Greater Restoration can heal you from exhaustion. This is where we now can stop sleeping. It takes so long. For this to work we are level 12 and we just now have been able to beat every single aspect of the rules of the game in order to make this work that is why the coffee lock has started to see such a decline is because with xanathar's coming out and making that a thing as long as your dm is ruling it that way the coffee lock is kind of dead to be honest and it, it's it's really hard you know it, it's tough to make it work with 100% reliability unless your DM is to completely on your side and is completely for you getting around these parts of the game. Your DM may start out on your team about it, but uh, they, they might change their mind after you start, you know, stacking up all of the spell slots in the world. We also now have nine sorcery points, which is really great for our conversion. That means that we can create fifth level spell slots and actually have a little bit left over, which is really, really fantastic. So now we can essentially create an unlimited number of fifth level spell slots and all of the other spell slots below it as well which is amazing and still have some sorcery points left over if we if we do our numbers correctly so essentially what we need to do is every night while everyone else is sleeping you are taking eight short rests instead of taking one long rest so basically every hour on the hour you need to get up and do some jumping jacks or something that uh that is above light activity essentially um, so that you break your long rest and then short rest so you get your spell slots back over on the warlock side and you convert those to your sorcery points and then convert those to sorcerer spell slots and you just do that over and over and over and over and if you've got a month of downtime you just do this constantly just do it all the time and this is how you end up creating this because the only way to get rid of those spell slots is to make you long rest which you just don't need to do anymore because every time you get a level of exhaustion you just great restoration it off and so you are now set up to be a coffee lock but I want to take this a step further because if you're going past level 12, which is rare, but if you're going past level 12, what do you do now? This is where things get difficult because we could take more levels of Warlock, right? If we took more levels of Warlock, we get more spell slots, we get higher level spell slots, and so obviously we can convert more faster. Um, but I don't think that's necessarily what we need to do. Um, we've gotten everything we need out of the Hexblade. We've gotten pretty much everything we need out of the Sorcerer, unless we want to go 
full on and get like 14 levels of sorcerer which i, I don't know that i need on this build um we but we could also look elsewhere and that is what we are going to do so at this point you know after we have looked within for all of these things we finally look to religion for our final bit and we're like you know i've had all this power welling up inside of me i need to find someone or somewhere to to figure out who i am where did this power come from so we are going to take some paladin levels to round out this build and this is kind of where the build takes off which is terrible to say that it just doesn't take off until level 12 uh, but it's just it is the nature of the game it's just where we are after xanathar's guide to everything so here we go at level one a paladin level 13 overall we get divine sense and lay on hands so you can now smack people in the face and heal them for five times your paladin level and that's pretty cool also five of those cures a disease as well which is great and divine sense you get the wiggly woos around you for any time there are some weird people uh or weird enemies i guess weird types of creatures uh yeah you just kind of feel funny whenever they're around you at level two we get a fighting style spell casting and divine smite so we get a fighting style and i'm just going to go with defense we didn't boost our dexterity earlier so i want some help with our with our armor class and so hey, this is a free plus one without having the dex bonus so that's kind of where we're going there spell casting we'll come back to and then divine smite divine smite is kind of the reason we're here because now we have unlimited fifth level spell slots so we can smite at the fifth level as much as we want and that's gross <laughs> and that's kind of insane uh we we can do some some nutty things and we're in darkness too right so we're smiting at advantage with double advantage technically with elven accuracy and if we crit on a 19 or 20 then we double our smite damage and it's two fifth level sp smites every time that damage just went from zero to a hundred in one level like that and it's stupid and so yeah at 14th level you've gone from a really good character to a stupid good character and it's really just in time for tier three and tier four of play so at this point also i would recommend you start looking for a different weapon namely something heavy something two-handed uh, go ahead and throw the shield in the trash we don't need it anymore if we get hit we get hit it is what it is uh, but this is this is our life now we're here to now just kill everything and that's what we're going to do with our unlimited spell slots um, and then for for first level paladin spells honestly I don't really like any of them because all of our smites require concentration which breaks up our darkness and I don't want to do that so I don't have any other use for our concentration right now so just kind of pick your favorites I, I don't really like any of them in there unfortunately so you know whatever I don't really care at Paladin 3 we get to choose our subclass and oh man there are so many that are so good and I just I just I wanted like three of them but I have to pick one and you know it, it's kind of a turning point at this point where you know we've gone from this sleep deprived little helpless whatever to now we're just straight up murdering everybody and so i mean it's got to be oath of vengeance right uh, it's got to be oath of vengeance and i think that this is such an amazing subclass for this build it helps our damage to be just that much more and it's going to actually help us with mobility as well of course there are other options that are great and we'll talk about those in the honorable mentions at the end but i ended up going with this one because number one we get a fear effect with abjure enemy i think that's nice it's unique it's different it's late to be getting this but i think it's cool and we also get vow of enmity vow of enmity is going to allow us to shut off our darkness if we want to that's pretty cool being able to still have advantage even though we are not using concentration so this allows us to concentrate on a different spell if we had taken something like spirit shroud or spirit guardians back way long time ago as a cleric then we could be using that as our concentration spell now as well to add on to our already impressive damage I think that's cool i mean I, I think spirit shroud would have been really cool but it also has taken you like 14 levels to find use out of it 
And so that's not very satisfying, but it is what it is, unfortunately. Um, so that's cool. We also get Harness Divine Power, but we don't need that because we're just creating spell slots from nothing. So who cares? Um, at Paladin 4, we get an ASI or a feat, and you better believe we're throwing that Warhammer in the trash and picking up great weapon master and we're going to be killing everything and it's just all gonna die because we have double advantage from our elven accuracy and we're either in darkness or we have our vow of enmity so everything's gonna die we can crit them with our hexblades curse just 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 everything's gonna die and the next level we get extra attack if they weren't gonna die the first time then they're gonna die the second time and now we can do two fifth level smites in one turn that's it's it's stupid it's really really dumb the amount of damage that we can do in one turn and and i love it i i think it's fantastic um now at this level if if i wanted to be really cheeky in going forward we have three more levels right we're level 17 if i wanted to be super cheeky i could take three levels of fighter and go echo knight and then we could smite some more i'm not going to do that <laughs> just because i i think that's ridiculous um but you could you could do that if you wanted to um because i mean we got second level spells here so we could pick up aid there as a paladin um so i mean that's kind of cool but instead i'm just going to stick with paladin the rest of the way just to keep things simple um we get aura of protection here at paladin six that creates a little 10-foot aura around us to help protect our allies which is great um at paladin seven we get relentless avenger which i think is really cool actually so when we hit a creature with an opportunity attack we actually can move our up to half of our speed as part of the reaction that's cool right that can help us get out of a jam that can help us keep an enemy in a really bad situation so if the enemy is faster than us then we could have actually somewhat catch up and be able to smite them again next turn which is again gross uh but yeah i think that's really really cool giving us more mobility and that movement does not provoke opportunity attacks which is also fantastic finally level 20 we're at paladin 8 paladin eight of course is an asi or a feat and i would either boost my constitution by another two or i would take the tough feat either one of those makes sense to me uh, i i think both of those are are very worthy ending points for this build and i i think that you'll definitely enjoy either way if you're playing to level 20 so that is our build for today let me know what you think today was one of our more complicated builds more in-depth builds this definitely took a lot more research than normal just to make this all somewhat correct to make it kind of to make it every table proof i guess is is kind of my goal here which is why there are a little bit of redundancies and i'm sure i'll hear that in the comments but my, my goal here was to make sure that at no matter which table you're at, you have a really good case to tell your DM why this is okay to do. And your DM may still tell you no. Your DM may still tell you you cannot do this, this is broken, it's too strong, go away, whatever. But in my opinion, this works, rules is written. And if your DM works, goes with rules is written, you should be able to do this. And I mean, it takes so long to, to work out I think most DMs are going to allow it. So it's really fun. It's really cool. You never have to sleep again. Maybe take the chef feed at the end so you can, you know, brew some coffee or something to actually be a coffee lock. Uh, I think that's cool. But for honorable mentions, for, for real, um, as far as other sorcerer subclasses, the Shadow and Clockwork Soul Sorcerers were definitely big contenders. The problem is I need greater restoration. No matter what, I need greater restoration or else this whole thing falls apart at most tables. So the Shadow Sorcerer would have allowed us to cast darkness using using our sorcery points and that could have been very, very valuable and we would have definitely used that. Um, and of course, Clockwork Soul is Clockwork Soul. Extra spells we get our ability to negate advantage and disadvantage whenever we want to i mean it's just kind of a gross subclass and i love it and i would have loved to have used it but again i had to go with divine soul simply because of greater restoration and that's just how restrictive everything is right now um then for paladin of course we went with vengeance but conquest and oathbreaker were also toward the top of my list again all the violent ones <laughs> 
all the violent uh, types of paladins are the ones that I chose, but you could have a bonus to hit, which is good. Um, that'll help you with uh, with your great weapon master, of course. Um, and of course, just all of these are really great for, for their own reasons. You can get some extra aura. Uh, you can uh, add on to your damage. One of them allows you to add your charisma bonus onto damage, which you already were doing. So you could do it again, which is cool. Um, but yeah, I, I, I ended up, I still think where I where I ended up was still the best option. Um, just giving you another option for advantage. And then finally, other warlocks. I wanted to go genie so bad because genie allows you to short rest super quickly. And I would have loved to have done this, but it's limited. And I I just I can't. I I have to go with hexblade or else I would have had to try to boost my strength and I just did not have enough points to put into strength I had to have that charisma modifier as everything so unfortunately that's where we're at so it had to be Hexblade and uh, I didn't really have another option as far as other races go man I really wanted to go Shatter Kai I really wanted the Shatter Kai so bad but we wouldn't have been able to use the teleportation feature as soon as we stopped sleeping because it's all tied to a long rest and that's what kind of sucks. Um, and then also the half-elf drow was another one that I was looking at. The the half-elf with the drow lineage would have given us access to darkness once per day. But again, we would have to sleep and we can't do that. So it would have only worked for the beginning and then we still would have had to have taken darkness on our spell list. Um, at the very least, we could have, I guess, taken it as a paladin and we would have had to gone with a different paladin subclass and we would have had to waited several levels and we just wouldn't have had a way to get reliable advantage or we could have gone with the same way and still had advantage but we would have had that one awkward level where either we continue sleeping and put that off another level which i don't want to do or we don't sleep and it just it's just it's just weird so i i just i think the, the way we did it was the best way to do it uh, I think we have to just take darkness as part of one of our spells, and that's just, it is what it is. Finally, as far as our feats here, Eldritch Adept and Metamagic Adept, they've been coming up a lot here on the channel, but uh, they're great. They're really great. Extra sorcery points is fantastic because that'll allow you to convert your uh, your spell slots over to the uh, sorcery points and sorcery points over to your regular spell slots quicker. Um, you have a bigger pool that way. And of course, um, Eldritch Adept, you could have picked up another invocation. We only have three levels of Warlock on this, so I would have loved to have picked up another invocation and this would have allowed us to do it. So we could have taken any of them that require the Eldritch Blast uh, prerequisite and that would have been nice to go ahead and take but unfortunately we can't so those are our honorable mentions for today so that is all for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed this one took a lot more effort than normal so i hope you guys really appreciate that make sure to leave a like if you did and subscribe if you haven't already later this week we are starting talking about the druid and next week we're starting talking about druid subclasses and so i'm really excited about that so stay safe this week stay healthy and we'll see you later Bye bye